If you're like me, you've probably been playing World of Warcraft for a long time now, and have made quite the number of alts over the years, so you know most of the starting zones like the back of your hand. Today, it's time to rank these starting zones. Just don't think this is my own idea. I'm not really creative enough for that. All that being said, it's time to begin with Northshire Valley. There was two things I actually learned by playing through it today. Blackout Kick just deletes everything without remorse, and that orcs love grapes. Yeah, that was a, that was a weird one. Overall though, the zone I thought was kind of meh, like, there isn't many interesting things going on. The only thing that particularly grabbed my attention was the burning of the farmland, but, you know, I take that as more of a personal win for the Horde. You know what they say about us Horde players, we do love our fire, but what really lets the starting area down is where it sends you as soon as you finish it. Moving over to the Valley of Trials, the zone mirrors its alliance counterpart with its enemy spies and, well, it's boringness. But what really lets it down is the scenery. I get it, lore-wise, Durotar is what it is. But in terms of do I think it looks great, well, no. The only thing really of note is that you get to bonk some peons, but to be honest, there's not really anything else, it's just pretty mid. Next we have Cold Ridge Valley, and of course, unlike Durotar, it's about as white as my dance moves at the club. Those who know me well must be proud I didn't make a cum joke. The story again is mostly boring, you kill some trolls, you kill some trolls, but really, what sticks out is the dedication the dwarven people have to their booze. As a guy who's been an avid pub goer for the last two years, I approve. It does make me think though, how do the Americans aged 18 to 20 manage? If I was American, I still wouldn't get served. How do they cope with the stresses of everyday life? Anyways, another bonus of the zone is the departure. You leave in style, while your poor pet desperately tries to catch up. Poor bugger. Overall, I think the zone is pretty good. Back to the Horde, we have Death now, which I just learned is a real thing. It might not be as white as Cold Ridge Valley. Oh wait, that came out wrong. But what it has is your new best friend, a quest to show Lillian she's an ugly bitch, some spider sacks, mobs from Classic that despawn the closer you get, Red Path saying the thing that everybody wanted Sam Carter to say for years, and finally your best friend graduating from zombie school. What more do you need from a zone? Shadow Glen to me is the peak of nostalgia, as my first ever character was a night elf hunter. Despite this, I still don't know my way around. The zone captures an amazing forest feel and is the quickest one so far with me finishing in 11 minutes. And normally, 11 minutes feels like a long time. It also features disappearing deer women. And for ultimate nostalgia, I tamed a webwood spider and named it Lightning. Why did I name a spider Lightning when I was a kid? Why was I too scared to leave the starting zone? Why is the icon so zoomed in? Look guy, I don't have all the answers. Overall, it's quick and nostalgic. Pretty much everything you need. Red Clyde Mesa didn't really have much going for it, in my opinion. I mean, it's just a field, innit? The only thing that it really has going for it for me is the armoured boars for taming if you're a hunter. The exit was kinda cool, but you know, it's no dwarven chopper. And it's also one of the quicker ones still, with 11 and a half minutes. But I doubt it would be that quick without the heirloom mount. Overall, it's not great, but it's not completely shite anyway. Next, we have New Tinkertown. And let me tell you, as someone who wants the title Purveyor of Mass Gnome Annihilation to be a thing, I wasn't too happy. So with that bad taste in my mouth, I set out to fight against the lepers, some gonorrhea elementals, some trogs, and some more lepers. All in all, it was a pretty boring experience, and it took double the amount of time as the last two zones. The zone itself was, again, a lot of white, but with some added green. So I guess you could say it is kind of like I'm not gonna lie to you guys, all in all, it was a pretty terrible experience. Back to the Horde, we have the Echo Isles. And you know what? It's actually pretty good. Sure, it's a bit slow, just like the gnome one, but you get some actually interesting lore, some cute little raptors following you around, the chance to wrangle and ride a raptor. You also get to listen to Night Song playing over here, which is simply one of the best soundtracks in the game. And you get to fight alongside your own personal best friend, Zunny. Except he doesn't graduate like Darnell. Darnell is Pog. And Bulgin's a damn chad, look at him, he doesn't give a shit. I like my women dumpy and droopy. I'm sorry, but the Echo Isles just deserves this. Now over to the tentacle boys, we have a man, um, a men? I don't know, a man, Vale. Anyways, the story goes like this. Hey, so, uh, you know we just crashed and irradiated all the wildlife, destroying ecosystems and polluting the water? Yeah. Let's get that guy to go finish the job. Then you just kind of go on a murder spree that doesn't really have anything of note until you have to kill some blood elves. And normally I don't like killing blood elves, but these ones were kind of being dicks, so, you know. Honestly though, I just didn't find the zone to be very fun at all. 
Now it's time for Sunstrider Isle. Aesthetically, this is probably one of my all-time favourites with its golden forest looks and its relaxing music. The quests themselves aren't really all that interesting, but it does something with them that I love. It gives you half of the quests at once, and you can simply do them all at once without having to run back and two all the time. It also features some big ominous crystal, which I believe we may one day get an entire WoW expansion out of. Do not toy with me, fool. No, I'm serious. That thing's been watching and plotting for the last 16 years now, he's basically going to be the next Jailer. The Jailer's pathetic power was nothing compared to mine. Overall though, I think the zone's pretty good, but the quests are just a tiny bit dull. To be clear, for these next ones I'm going to be talking about before they reach Stormwind or Orgrimmar, because it wouldn't really make much sense for me to just talk about like that up to level 5 part and that's it. Now I actually know the Gilnean storyline so well that I completely copied it for my GCSE English and got a pretty decent pass on it. Thanks Blizzard. So here's the rundown. You see if old man Timmy's grandson Todd's coming out to play, just to be interrupted by a werewolf. You find out that just like in the Royal Navy, you were born in Gilneas, but you were made into a fury in a crack attic's basement. The wolfmen decide they wish to live in a godless society and destroy the cathedral. You find out that the solution to feral rage is a swiftness 3 potion. You find out that Sylvanas is a massive bitch. You find out that Gilneas is prone to natural disaster. You find out that Gen is rich. You find out that Suicide Hotline is a very valuable service that Gilneas unfortunately does not possess. You find out that Sylvanas hates British kids. Why is every motherfucker disappearing nowadays? You find out that Sylvanas was a massive war criminal even before the Jailer did anything. And finally you find out that even though the Night Elves are the furthest away on the map, they were the only ones in the Alliance that could be bothered to come and save you. Yeah, I bet the Gilneans remember that to this day. All jokes aside, the story is just really good, and that alone makes it deserve the S tier. The Goblin storyline is one that I honestly believe has one of the most fun playthroughs, but it makes zero fucking sense. Here's what happens. You become a taxi driver. Uh-huh. You party with women. Okay. You rob the bank. Right. You play ball with Deathwing. Sorry, what? The Alliance titanics you. Say again? You become a Beyblade. I'm sorry, a what? You help pick a boy commit murder on a mass scale. What? You fight Mecha Chicken. Okay, I've had enough. You fight an old god. You fight the natives. You play Black Ops Zombies with Pack-a-Punched Boots. You execute Turtle God. You fight the Alliance again for air superiority. You ride the no-clip minecart. You Mecha 1v1 the clear villain. Pickle forgives him, and we all head home. I'm sorry, but what the f- I think the whole experience is a pretty fun one. But because the story just makes absolutely zero sense, it kinda has to go down as here. The Wandering Isle is possibly even more strange than the Goblin story for just one small reason. The island is a giant turtle, but not to be confused with Turtle God. The storyline has you do a bunch of chores around the island, like play with the water elemental and farming simulator. While all this is going on, you follow the story of these two fuckwits falling in love. And it's really annoying. Anyways, the giant turtle got an ouchie, and so we go to remove it. Jeez, all like, let's use that old goblin saying, overkill is underrated, and then Ace is all, why I order? And she goes up and has a disagreement, but then calms down and lets she do it. The only problem is that despite popular belief, using high explosives on a turtle may cause grievous bodily harm. Another turtle made it to the water. Anyways, G's using his good old worker mentality and is all, Okay, now we just gotta get our local holy priest. Asa simply does not see this ingenuity and even though she let him do it, she decides that she hates him and runs away. Come on Asa, I don't see any other men blowing up giant turtles for you. What's a guy gotta do? Then as soon as it's fixed, she runs back and says, We did it. We? Okay, no, that's it. I've had enough of Asa's shit. Get me out of there. Nope. The Exiles Reach storyline starts off with you sailing the seas, until the Shaman Weatherman was to blame for not predicting the Great Flood. On the island, it features orcs that have a clear speech issue, suicidal Vrykul ghosts begging for their execution, and undead Robbie Ron. I'm free! <laughs> Overall, the story is alright, I guess. Like, it makes sense for the most part. The main purpose of the zone is to teach people about the different things in WoW, like how different classes' abilities work and the existence of dungeons. 
But my main issue with it is that it takes away from the uniqueness of each race by removing its original story. But obviously, depending on where they are in this tier list, it could really be a good thing or a bad thing. All that being said, this is what I've concluded. It's a good zone for your first time playing in WoW. But after that, I would encourage people to play their original story in order to keep the uniqueness of each race. The Scarlet Enclave is a story of your dark rebirth and your time serving the Lich King and the Scourge. Within the Scourge, there is many different responsibilities. For example, you must kill the unworthy, spy on your neighbours, return lost property, murdering the innocent, brilliant disguises, torturing people to death, murdering your best mate from college, even better disguises, and finally a massive battle that ends in the Lich King revealing he's a little bit of a dick. The story for this zone is another that's hard to fault, and is loved by the many Lich King stands around the world. I think it's fair to say it would be hard to argue that this zone would be anything less than S tier. If there is anything to be said about Mardoom, it's that it's pretty green and pretty populated with demons. We're there to reduce that population. Allow me to show you a visual representation of this from one of my previous videos. Come on though, you can't say you're surprised, they're literally called demon hunters. While on Mardoom you get to go and do fun things like sacrifice your friends and making your friends overdose. Although you learn crime doesn't pay by spending years in demon prison. While there you get to tell your night elf friend to piss off and you get to meet Shadgar. All in all, I'd say a pretty fun experience for the whole family. Finally, we move on to our final zone, the Forbidden Reach, except there is only one slight issue. Now I don't want to delete my current evoker, so there was only one option. And when choosing Realm, I realised that only one of them particularly screams content. Don't give me that look, it's for the content. And if you want to stick around for said content, you could always consider subscribing. To begin on the Forbidden Reach, we start by breaking out of Dragon Jail. I guess everybody's just been waking up in jail lately. We learn how to use a spell type that makes this class advanced. And we learn how to fly. We save and return the Tuskal child to its family, despite the fact I'm pretty sure if we were actually dragon people, we would probably just eat it. We also learn how to counter chemical warfare using the power of bugs. We learn that evokers only have two abilities, according to this cinematic. We also learn that Abyssian knows how to nod, and that Raffian can be beaten by a rock. If only we knew that back in Nihilotha. And finally, we learn that Nozdormu is Gigachad, and he saves us all. I'd say for our final ranking, we land on a pretty good experience. To conclude, I've reordered them within their own tiers. Let me know what you guys think. Please consider leaving a like, because I have no doubt that the gnomes will be downvoting the shit out of this for my disdain towards their green sludge. And thanks for watching. And now you should watch this video to see how oddly specific AI can be.